Welcome to another episode of Driveway Dudes. Now, a little jam jar, or preserve jar, and some coax cable. And what are we going to do with those? Right, so you've probably read the intro, so now you know what I'm going to do. Right, so cut your coax to 18 inches or 45, 46 centimeter lengths. And then what you do is then you twist it to loosen up the outer sleeve. And when you have that done then is you peel back you pull back the outer sleeve until you have the inside exposed. Once you have that pulled back enough, then you will get a little pliers and you'll tug away on the cable and you'll be able to pull it right out of the sleeve. When you've managed to pull out the center piece, you'll end up with the outer sleeve and providing there's no holes in it, that will be your little pipe. The next thing you'll do then is you need to twist again, see if you can loosen it up a bit. Go back and forward, flex it around, see if you can loosen it up. And then grab a needle nose pliers and then just slide the whole thing off. If it doesn't come off in one go then what you can do then is you can cut it into or just nip it at two inch sections but make sure you don't touch the center core and it'll just peel off because we the two inch section will be needing that later. Now with the jar what we'll need to do is we'll need to put two holes for the contacts in the jar and then we'll need to put a, a further hole for the pipe itself to go in to feed in so again with a nail you can punch the holes and bring them up just as wide as you to get this in tight I used a screw to get the hole started and I worked it around so that the little dial it's the it's called a dielectric the dielectric will fit in really really tight you want it as tight as possible and then with the screwdriver I work that in and around so that the pipe itself will go in very tight so next now we're going to make up the little coils so we can run this. We'll just move that to one side and we'll move the screw away. We'll come back to that in a moment. So the next thing you'll do then is you have your wire and you have your screwdriver. So roughly about two inches put it up there and hold it in place with your thumb and then wrap and wrap it around as tight as you can to, to, to each other and just keep working your way around and what we want is we want at least 10 twists and you can work it until it's complete and we'll count them then as soon as they're in place. You will end up with a little bit of leftover, but you can nip that off. And then as you can see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 is plenty to do the job, but you can cut it back to 10 if you want. We'll see what it looks like with 16. Just slide it off the screwdriver and as you can see there we have a little surplus that's where it's going to pop out of the jar. 
and we can connect it up. So do that with the other one and then we'll go from there. Now we've both of the coils made up, uh, we'll get the jar again. So what we'll need to do then is we will just size it up and you can see here it's, it's they'll be popping out through the holes here. So what we want to do is we want to stretch the coil to reach down into the water. So you just grab it and then just pull away and if you like then you can use your little needle nose and just try and get a uniform Again, turn it around the other way and pull and see what that looks like there we go for a, we go a bit more than that so we'll stretch it up a bit more on both ends and how does that look yeah that looks about right and we'll just do it with the other one and then we'll fit them that's a little two coils ready to go and I've just tidied them up and straightened the pins so they they all look pretty much the same now we come back to the dielectric on the dielectric there's a bit of foil it's glued onto the white which is an insulator so what we'll do is we'll with your fingernail now don't cut it but use your fingernail or use something to peel back the foil off the dielectric and when that's done cut it in half and you'll end up with two pieces like this and they still have the hole in them so that you can feed the wire through next thing we'll do then is we'll take the lid off and we'll push the dielectric into the jar in the two holes that are provided and push the pins in through them and it's not awkward or difficult and there you have your two pins ready now it is a little bit loose but we're going to come to that now in a sec but we'll put it into the jar and close the jar down and line them up where you think they'll be just right so say about halfway down the jar which allows for any draw any water if the water uh, drops down a bit so we found the where we want them so undo the jar and hold them in place and with the heat gun just glue them into place just hold them there and hold them in place until they dry now you'll still be in a position to move them around a small bit there particularly the coils themselves you can move them around to suit yourself and you'll be able to bring them back and forward uh, to different depths in the water once that's done now the next thing to do is your pipe so again feed the pipe in and put it in it will you will have to squeeze it a small bit to get it in because it will be tight and again it's all right yeah, there we almost have it now you only want it a little bit a little bit below the lid so that it will allow the gas to come out once you have that in again with the heat gun just run it around and that will seal it nicely give it a little bit of time to cool down and then we're ready for the next step and once the glue is cooled down and it, it'll seal it nicely 
and what I've done is I've actually put a little bit around the copper where it goes into the dielectric as you can see and on the outside then I've run some around the outside to help seal it. So what you're going to do now uh, is going to fit it into the jar. Make sure that the coils are not touching or none of the wire is touching. So get the jar and just screw it in and we're ready to fill it with a solution. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you in the next video the mix I'm going to use for the solution and I'm going to power it with a normal power bank. So tune in for the next one and I'll show you the next step.